Good morning, folks. We wake up to a somewhat more exciting star. Filaments dance. Active region crests into view just south of the equator. Plasma lifts up and begins feeding into the outer corona on the departing polar crown. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun presents more than just the bright points of active regions, but the darker coronal hole segment as well. That newly spotted active region, unlike the one on the north, has very complex magnetic fields that are tied to a legitimate sunspot below. There is at least one main leading umbra and several cores appearing in what is likely delta configuration behind it. The solar wind is up next, relative calm stream to begin with, but on the right side, we see the yellow and purple solar wind density and plasma speed dropping down even further into very calm range, almost anemic in the solar wind, and geomagnetism is back towards the lower end of the green. Couple quick Earth notes, Cyclone is there, pounding the region, hope for the best and await the reports. Meanwhile, after an anomalous break in the normally active Cleveland volcano in Alaska, it did begin re-emitting yesterday. Really wish the AVO wouldn't use that pyramid and open eye symbol for these things, but okay. First up in the science, we go to MIT for a 99% annoying article on geoengineering, at least for those who do not favor their spraying the sky. They say that one of the unintended consequences is a disruption to extratropical cyclones. They paint it kind of pretty, too. Could be a reduction in nor'easters for the United States. But the article does finally stop short of total Tom Schillery by commenting that potential wind stalls could be a problem that would create hydrological consequences and potential trapping of pollution in specific regions. For the newer viewers here, you likely won't be shocked to discover we keep tabs on these scientific publications on this topic to try to help anticipate their future policies. Up next, boy, I bet they spent a lot of money on this one. It is meant to be the ultimate in galactic center visualizations. Kind of a shame how they just have this dark ball in the middle, but alas, missing Taurus and potential evacuated central modulation point notwithstanding, it is hard to suggest this is not fun to watch. Anyway, we're going to stick with the galactic center here and arrive at the detection of light from a previous galactic center outburst, illuminating the Magellanic Stream connected to the large and small Magellanic Clouds, the dwarf galaxies orbiting our Milky Way. For those who know how large the Fermi bubbles are coming out of the north and south lobes at the center of the galaxy, which shine in gamma rays, this would be at a vastly greater distance. Sticking with the galactic center here, it is now confirmed that the plasma motions around the galactic center can be controlled by the magnetic fields they detect and map in the region, rather than gravity. Interestingly, for those who are deep into the plasma cosmology topic, they did this by mapping dust grains, which align perpendicularly to magnetic fields, or with the field in the charged current. Just two minor side notes here to close, of little import, I assure you. First, they surveyed galaxies, plotted their size, and also added a column for the ionization or charge of the galaxy, and it turns out that matched the volume size distributions better than the estimated galactic mass. Yeah, that wouldn't be too important. And yeah, there's also confirmation that climate change alone couldn't have killed off the megafauna at the beginning of the Holocene. So, obviously, since the only other possible factor at play is human hunting, that must be the answer to the end of the megafauna on Earth. Certainly it has nothing to do with the concurrent geomagnetic excursion known as Gothenburg at the time, a geophysical event we know to be an extinction-level event in terms of combined UV and cosmic ray effects, and that's before you consider that a solar micronova may or may not have delivered all of those isotopes they know were created relatively recently in stellar nova events but were only recently discovered to be from nearby, like very nearby, as they must be trapped inside the original nova nebula. Got questions? Try the homepage of suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. Lots of good stuff on our channel page as well here on YouTube and in the description box right below this video. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, your May 17th Deeper Look episode has more on that dusty pinball trapping isotope showing why they are likely from the sun. We've got your wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.